Alrighty, so let's go ahead and move forward. Our next stop will be the electrodes and training info. So as I click this, we're going to see a window appear. And what we have here is a labeling mechanism to tell you where are the sites going to be, where are you placing the electrodes, and it's going to give you access to the channels that you have had, that you've selected. So basically we're in a one channel. Well, in a one channel, we simply have active one, reference one, and ground. Okay. So that was right at the bottom of data channels. <coughs> Electro data channels. Data channels. Mm -hmm. All right. Once you're here with your active, you can select the site that you're going to place the electrode. Same with reference and ground. We give you a little um, <coughs> description here, a little head showing you some of the different sites. But there's some other things to look at on the screen. Right now this is a one channel, but let's say it was a two or a four and we were looking at z-scores for instance. Of course the sites are very important, but we have some other decisions we'd have to make. You'd have to put an age saying how old is the client that we're currently going to train and whether their eyes are open or closed. Okay two different databases depending on whether their eyes are open and closed. Everybody clear there? With this circumstance being a single channel just with the alert settings, this is simply labels. It's not doing anything else. Even if I have something labeled wrong and I put the electrode where it's supposed to go, it doesn't affect anything. But it's a really good tool for if you have text or anything like that working with you so that they know where to put the electrodes because when we get to the training screen and we start to run the next session, it's going to prompt you and say place electrodes at blah blah blah. So having them correct is a good idea. If you're using cap, let's say your, your electrode is F5 or whatever, and the reference one is A1, um, the where's the ground on this, uh, on this design? on this design, meaning on the, the head thing here? Yeah. Well, the ground is simply wherever you want to put it. Like, for instance, I have the ground at A2. A2 is the ear. Okay. I can put the ground at CZ. But I don't see an A2 on, on the drop down on the Sure, uh, look, at, look at my screen. A2. Here, look at the drop down. Every Okay. All every drop down's the same. Where is it? It's oh, below T four. Under T four. Right. Okay. Were you saying this protocol No. No. This is simply a label. This protocol, since it's not a Z score protocol, doesn't really care where you put the sites. This is to help you. This is a tool for you to use. Cap, there is a ground. Right, but, but that. It's not on this. It's not on this. Uh, well, on if this. you have a cap and you're using the ground, we put in here GND to represent what the cap would have for ground, oh, okay. which is a non 1020 site. Right. The sites here, we have you the 1020 sites plus we added OZ for you. Okay, so you can A1, which means one ear, and then you can, you can use the ground there. Sure, you can put the ground anywhere you want. It's a differential amplifier, so you're m actually measuring between the two sites, the difference between what those two sites are recording. So the reference is very important. Now, if the reference happens to be an ear, theoretically, it's supposed to be neutral. So there shouldn't be anything there. And then your main information you're getting is under the active. So should you always use the same That's protocol specific. Some people do what's called a bipolar protocol, which they're actually going to use a um, active on the head and a reference on the head, not on an ear, and they'll be simply um, measuring the difference between the two versus putting the reference on the ear, which again theoretically should give you a neutral. But 
Yeah, Z-scores assume they are linked ears and you're not referencing somewhere else on the head because that's completely different. And then um, uh, the use session wizard to control session or use with mini queue, is that also going to work for the discovery? <laughs> Did we get there yet, Gwen? All right, so the next option, we notice that we do have a checkbox that says use session wizard to control session, and then the parentheses use for mini queue. Okay, if you basically not as much mini queue, it almost should say mini queue two, but if you have a mini queue two and you check this, then the system knows you're not at just C3 or just C. It knows that you'll be moving along the head, around the head, in a sequence of specific groups of four at a time. Okay? And then the question that Gwen had mentioned is, will you use this for the discovery also? And the answer to that is no, because the discovery has its own software. That's discovery software. It already knows that you're looking at 19 channels. Okay? Does that make sense? Okay, no problem.